Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick Godot tutorial on how to do pseudo localization in a Godot 4 C -sharp project. So, a few weeks ago, I did a tutorial on a basic dialogue system a la JRPG, and among other things, I discussed how to localize the text and audio to have multiple languages in a game. Today, I want to continue on this topic of internationalization by focusing on the text and talking about another really cool built-in tool in Godot, the pseudo-localization utilities. By the end of this video, you'll know several tips and tricks for preparing your internationalized content even before you finished translating all of your game's data, and how to anticipate the various difficulties that a multilingual project can bring. Oh, and by the way, if you're still a bit new to Godot 4 and C Sharp Game Dev, you might want to check out my brand new short read ebook, Lanmana Getting Started. This quick practical guide will have you explore the fundamentals and it will teach you how to set up scenes, program in C Sharp, design UIs, and even build your own tic tac toe game step by step. So, if you want a way to embark on your Godot 4 C Sharp journey in less than 100 pages, and for a low price, don't hesitate to have a look at the Gamewood page over here. And now with all that said, let's dive in and talk about pseudo-localization in Godot 4 and C-Sharp. Okay, so before diving into Godot's tool for pseudo-localization, let's quickly see why it's interesting at all. So in a nutshell, pseudo-localization is about using some temporary data that approximate real multilingual text pretty well and allow you to get a feel for what your game will look like in various languages early on, even if you haven't actually finished translating everything yet. More precisely, it can be a great way to identify three kinds of issues. First of all, it's nice to have a way of quickly eyeballing the text that aren't localized yet. So those are all the text that don't actually correspond to a key in your localization table, and that thus will stay exactly the same no matter the current language. And so the localization tools can of course be a great solution to easily spot the remaining missing labels. Then another common problem is to check whether your text font supports a variety of characters. Unicodes and special letters included. It may sound a bit silly, but actually, if you're a French speaker like me and you want to play around with some free fonts you find on the net for your game interfaces, you might be faced quite often with the problem of accented characters. Best case scenario, the font will contain the real equivalent, but more often than that, you just get the non accented version copied back or even a weird marker because there isn't actually anything for this special slot. And of course, if you plan on making some version of your game in Japanese, Chinese, Korean or Indian for example, then the standard Latin alphabet just won't cut it. And it's better to know that as soon as possible so that you can knowingly decide if you want to stick with this font or find another one that better adapts to localization. Finally, a third common issue with IATN text is variations in length. Indeed, languages all have different grammatical constructions and vocabulary, so the same sentence might be very different in terms of character count from one locale to another. Here, kanjis are again an extreme case, since an entire word can be represented by just a single character in your line. Add to that that sometimes you don't have a direct translation, and so you need to find kind of a tailored translation for this chunk of dialogue, and you see that even from a technical point of view, translation isn't just about switching up a few letters. So you need to be aware of the overall length of your text in various languages to make sure that your user interface is always nice, or at the very least readable. And luckily, Godot's pseudo-localization has a set of tools that are super easy to use. Alright, so to see how this pseudo-localization works, let's use some basic demo project, which, as always, you can find on my GitHub at this address. So in this tutorial, I'm going to assume that we have a typical user interface, with some stats on our player in the top left corner, 
a menu button in the top right, and skill buttons at the bottom. If we hover those buttons, we get a quick description of each skill on the side, and if we click on the menu button, we get this pop-up with some extra controls and a resume button to get back to the main interface. Now, all of those texts are meant to be, ultimately, localized in four languages. English, which will be the default language, French, Russian, and Japanese. Which means, as you've probably guessed, that we'd need our font to support a lot of various characters, and our game interface could contain text with very different lands. But contrary to our previous tutorial on JRPG-like dialogues, suppose that we don't yet have all of our translations. For now, we only have the default English version. So I've got my translation file that is here imported and assigned in my project settings panel in the localization tab, and if we inspect it, we indeed have only two columns, so the key column and the translation for the English language. Now, if we run the game, we notice that most of the UI indeed gets properly translated to the English version. We don't just get our keys as is, even though that's what they looked like with the labels in the UI in the editor. That's because, by default, Godot's control-derived nodes use localization and they interpret the content of a label or a button as an i18 key. If you don't want it to happen, you can actually toggle off the options in this part of the control inspector. But okay, now what if we want to use pseudo localization to get an idea of how our interface will change depending on the current language? To toggle on this tool in a Godot project, we just need to go to the project settings panel, turn on the advanced mode with the slider over here, and finally go to the internationalization pseudo localization section. And at the top, we have a global toggle for pseudo localization that we can enable to use this tool in our project. Then below, you see that we get a list of parameters that we can configure to tweak how this pseudo localization is really applied to our project. To begin with, let's see how we can easily ensure that all of our texts are properly localized. To do this, the easiest solution is to simply toggle on the override option. This replaces every character in your localized labels with asterisks, so if any text isn't overridden, it means that the text inside isn't actually localized. This makes it easy to spot the missing internationalization in your interface, and once you're done, you can just turn the override option back off or even all of the pseudo-localization utilities to get back the actual translations in your labels. Then, if you want to check that your font supports Unicode and special characters, you can use the Replace with Accents option. All of your localized text will be auto-replaced with the accented equivalent. So, for example, something like Hello will be turned into this new text. So, although it makes for quite a strange debug visual, it's extremely nice to know from early on if the font will handle everything, since, as we said before, if we choose a font that doesn't support the necessary Unicode symbols, we'll just get some unique markers that clearly show missing characters, and that's not too professional to show to players. Now, let's see how to easily test various text lengths in our UI. More specifically, we're going to check what our skill description text looks like if there are more or less characters. So for that, there are two pseudo-localization options that we can use. One, we can use the double vowels parameter to, as the name implies, repeat each vowel in our text twice. This is usually a good approximation of longer text for localized labels. Two, if that's not enough, we can use the expansion ratio parameter to further increase the length of our text. Basically, this will pad the original string with underscores at the beginning and at the end, and this ratio is just a number between 0 and 1 that tells Kodo how much to add to the text. So 0 0.5 means 50% more length to the original string. 
You see that those options make it easy to check if longer text fits the UI well, and typically they can be really useful to avoid bad overflows in buttons or panels and make sure that everything adapts properly. And to wrap up this tutorial, here are a few extra tricks with pseudo localization in Godot 4 and C Sharp. As you can see if you take a look at the docs on pseudo localization, there are a few other properties that can be useful depending on your project. For example, the fake by D property is a way to see what your localized labels will look like for languages that are written right to left, instead of the left to right system that is more common. So typically, this can give you an idea of what your interface would look like in Arabic. The prefix and suffix options allow you to easily know visually whether the text in your UI are currently using pseudo localization or not. By default, if this tool is enabled in your project, then your text will be wrapped in square brackets, as specified by these prefix and suffix values. But you could change it to put your own characters and even longer debug strings if you prefer. The Skip Placeholders option is a way to prevent Godot from replacing placeholders in formatted strings, but it's for GDScript, so I won't go into too much details here. But anyway, as a final side note, if you ever want to toggle the pseudo localization options at runtime via some C -sharp script, you can always play around with your project settings like this to tweak some of its parameters to your liking. So here you go, you now know some basic tricks to using pseudo localization in a Godot project, and also why it's interesting, what issues it can help solve from early on. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.